All right, welcome to Rated NA, a very special San Diego Comic Con 2015 edition, and this one we review Anne Foley of Agents of Shield. This is crazy. So Anne Foley uh, has been a costume designer for a really long time, and uh, we started following each other on Twitter a while back. And uh, I really, I always, she's one of those people on Twitter that I always really liked what she had to say, like always super positive on Twitter, um, always really funny. And uh, one thing led to another and she had some free time on Sunday at SDCC and we set up an appointment and uh, for all all of our listeners know this, um, but everyone here at the show is a huge fan of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I I would, I would honestly say right now that it's my favorite show. Uh, I love it. I think it's great. It just, it, it. There's something magical about, you know, watching these these comic book characters go on special adventures and they wouldn't look as cool if they didn't have amazing costumes and, and look as amazing as they did and do. So uh, it was yeah. awesome to and talk I think, to. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think that's a big part of it is that it does look good. You know, like it's not just a sci-fi show that is like, Bleh, but it looks good. Absolutely. It looks amazing. So um, for new listeners, you guys can find us on Twitter and that's at Nerd Appropriate. Um, we'll do our best to reply to every single tweet. If you go to our Facebook page, that is a slash Nerd Appropriate. Make sure you follow us there. And uh, we do a show every week. We've been doing this for about five years now, almost five years now. So if you subscribe, we do uh, you know a show almost every week. And then around San Diego Comic-Con time, we do extra shows like our show here with Ann Foley. So yeah, and if you subscribe, you can go back and listen to uh, Milana Vintrube from Other Space, uh, the Expanse authors Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank, or even Mr. Brian Cranston yeah. uh, from Supermansion. Um, so go back and give those a listen. And thanks for subscribing and, and hanging out now. Yeah. So enjoy our Here's chat. the interview with Ann Foley. Ann Foley is here, who is, is doing costumes on S.H.I.E.L.D. How are you doing? I'm great. So Loving this is, every minute of this crazy con. This is ridiculous. So we are, um, just for our listeners, we're in, I guess, the, the inner sanctum of the Marvel booth, uh, which is someplace I actually, I never thought I would be back here, but it's pretty cool. There's like, yeah, it's great. There's chairs. <laughs> there's some cool posters. It's kind of uh-huh. quiet. Um it's awesome. It's awesome back here. So are you having a good show so far? Oh, it's been great. It's, it's yeah. Sunday. Yeah. And uh, it's normally like it. I'm exhausted. Are you exhausted? Yeah, I'm. I'm a little tired. Yeah, I've been. I've been saying this in a lot of my interviews, but um, I have this this tracker now that tells me how far I've walked, and I think I've been walking over like ten or eleven miles every day. <laughs> I'm. Surprising. I'm not even. I'm not even joking. So it is an yeah. exhausting experience. Um, so tell us, uh, our listeners, a little bit about your background. I uh, obviously researched the heck out of you, and you're you've done some amazing, incredible stuff, and everybody's seen your work for years and years and years. But can you tell us a little bit about what you've yeah, done? Yeah, I, I was very fortunate. Um, I got to work with some amazing costume designers as an assistant designer earlier in my career and um, you know designers like Marlene Stewart and Michael Kaplan uh, who I did Star Trek Into Darkness with uh, Michael Wilkinson I did Terminator Salvation with and uh, so I've had some incredible mentors along the way and they have, working with these designers really, really prepped me to be able to take over a show like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. Or take on a show like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I should say. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, it's, you know, I am um, very, very fortunate and it's good to have that background because we do build a lot of stuff on the show oh for sure so having that nice base really again really helps quite a bit i mean the scope of the show is is insane and it kind of your background you've done everything i mean you've you've done you know crazy stuff like austin powers and which when i saw that i was like oh my gosh you know i remember seeing the movie in the theater and absolutely loving costume work actually very true yeah Um, i've done everything from Behind the Candelabra to Hansel and Gretel Winch Hunters to oh, I love that movie so much. That was such yeah, a great, great movie, yeah. Uh, Terminator Salvation. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then ending uh, with Star Trek Into Darkness. So, That's, yeah, it's kind of, I've jumped all over the place, which is a really good and a very lucky thing to be able to do in costumes. So, you know, again, it gives me that really wonderful base mm-hmm. to um, be able to draw from. Yeah. How were you approached to uh, to work on Shield? How did that come about? 
Uh, Betsy Hyman was uh, hired to design the pilot mm -hmm. for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And um, I had worked with Betsy on the A-Team. And which is she, also a great film. Which is also I a great really film. Love yeah, that. I really love that. I really love that. A lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Betsy had approached me saying, um, you know, asked me if I wanted to assist her mm. on the pilot. And I, of course, jumped at the chance. And she, uh, she pushed me uh, with the producers to take the show over when it went to series because she was not going to be available to do the series. She had another film already lined up. And um, so thankfully, the producers were willing to take a chance, and uh, and the rest is history, as they say. That's awesome. So, I mean, this is a, r a rather generic question, but I think it's a good question. Um, there's obviously a lot of challenges adapting a comic book world and bringing them to television, um, making it aesthetically pleasing for a wide variety of different viewers. What's, what's the most challenging aspect of that? Well, I wouldn't say it's necessarily just about it being on television. I think it's about making it uh, make sense for our universe that we have established and created for the show. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that would have been a feature or whether it's television, um, you know, the, the edict is to have it make sense, keep it, you know, keep it grounded for, for our show, mm -hmm. for our world. And, um, and so I wouldn't necessarily call it a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, it's just part of uh, the aesthetic of the show and what we do. How do you, how do you go about designing new looks for characters so for season season one and season two visually we're very different in terms of yeah. the costume design season two i hate to use the term edgy but the look was much edgier i remember when sky came back i was like oh shit like she was yeah. just she looked like a completely different character like you know clad in leather she had spikes on her gloves yeah. she had she had the bangs um yeah. what what made you sort of take that that change or well Go We're after that. very lucky on the show to have an amazing team of writers, and I will tell you, it's right there on the page. And so I work really closely with the writers, um, and especially with Marissa Tancharone. Mm -hmm. And um, and we knew with the fall of Shield, you know, at, towards the end of season one, things were things were changing, and it was already getting to be a little bit darker. But we decided for season two that um, you know, with the events at the end of season one, they had to grow up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we wanted, and the show took a little bit of a darker turn. Mm -hmm. and we wanted to reflect that with their clothes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we, but at the same time, maintaining who they were established it as in season one so that you right. still recognize them as the characters they were season one, but just with a twist in season two. Right, right. So. Do you do you have any favorites to design for? I know that's such a horrible, that's a horrible well, question to ask you to. Uh, yeah, well, a lot of people have asked me this question, and I yeah. always say the same thing. It's like asking me to pick my favorite child. Yeah. I love them all dearly, mm -hmm. and I have fun with every single one of them because one of the beautiful things about costume design is that it's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so I love collaborating with the cast. And you know, and helping them to find these characters. And it's always a joy when they put something on and I mean, their posture will change and right. they'll be like, I love this, this is so Sky, mm -hmm. um, or this is so Simmons. Uh, so, you know, that part of it is, is awesome. It's really yeah. great. That is really cool. Um, there have been some favorite moments of mine uh, when Coulson and May go undercover and they're completely, oh, yeah. completely in different wardrobes and it's absolutely hilarious. Undercover, Was that fun to kind of put to, oh yeah, yeah undercover. Undercover <laughs> is a big favorite among yeah. the cast mm -hmm. and um, I think for the fans too. I, okay, that being said, one of my favorite moments would probably be May and Coulson going under as Fitz and Simmons yes. undercover for uh, season one. Yes, that, that was, was hilarious. amazing. It was one really of my favorite funny. scenes, yeah. yeah. Really funny. The file transfer out the window is really yeah. is brilliant. I loved yeah. it. But I also, you know, I do. I love putting fits in tactical. Yeah. And, um, you know, because I like getting to put them in stuff that you don't really see them in a lot. Mm -hmm. So let's let's talk uh, for a second about you mentioned putting people in things. Um, let's talk a little bit about Deathlock. Okay. How how fun has that been to bring that character onto oh, screen? God. It's been amazing. Yeah. It's been really really amazing and. Um, you know, and we always, from the very beginning, the plan would always be he was going to have an arc. Mm -hmm. um, you know, starting in the pilot uh, episode, 
as Mike Peterson and mm -hmm. he's got the centipede device on his arm and so there was always going to be a progression with this character and who knows there could continue to be a progression yeah I have no I have no idea where he's he's gonna land but um, it's been an absolute blast yeah. designing him do you have um, I don't know if you're allowed to say this yet do you have any characters that you would love to design for like bring on the show either from the cinematic universe or you know because um, you did have a uh, lady Sif come in and and yeah. yeah, I mean, that's pretty exciting. But do, are, do you have any favorites that you'd like to well, see? I've always said that my favorite Marvel character is Black Widow. Oh, yeah, she's great. She's the best. I, I love that character so much. I'd love to see her on the show. Oh, uh, me too. There's so many references to her on the show as well. I think the writers like her a lot. Yeah. So they're always just kind of like, hey, you know, let's get Natasha Romanoff in there. And oh, yeah, it'd be great to see uh, Black Widow and Agent May. Like, yeah. You know, kicking some serious ass. Right. So, um, obviously, a, a lot of our listeners and all of us at the site are huge fans of all of you guys and huge fans of your social media feeds because, um, you know, we, we pay attention to what people say on social media and you guys are all insanely positive and it looks like you're having a ridiculously good time all the time. Yeah. Um, is that vibe on set really truly like that? Oh, that? absolutely. They're like a family. Yeah. And you know, the whole cast and the crew, it is, it's like a great big family. And yeah. I'm not just saying that, um, it's honestly, it's really true. And I think that you can see that Yeah. in how much fun they have on social media together. Right. Uh, you know, a perfect example is the dub smash that's been happening. It's ridiculous. The war between Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and um, Agent Carter. Mm -hmm. It's been hilarious. It is and, really funny. It's really funny. Uh, yeah, so that's a really great example of how much these guys all love each other. Right, and, and where and where can folks find you on social media if they want to add uh, you to their list? A Foley twenty four on Twitter and Ann dot Foley on Instagram. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ann, for hanging out with us. Absolutely. That was awesome. Thanks it was for a blast. By. All right, thank you. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to our chat with Ann Foley. She was, uh, you know, really generous with her time. It was literally, um, we conducted that interview in, in the back of the Marvel booth on the San Diego Comic-Con <laughs> floor, which is, I think, during the interview, I'm kind of like, oh, I'm in, I'm in the lion's den. It was awesome. <laughs> like, back there, and there's all these, you know, like the control booth, and just very, very cool. So it was uh, really nice of her to invite us back there to talk for a bit and uh, I'm insanely excited for season three of shield and uh, for what, you know, Anne has in store for the characters and, and uh, bringing the, the secret warriors to life. So there's a lot of really cool stuff coming up in season three. And like yeah. I said earlier, you know, the show wouldn't be as good without her amazing work on it. So, um, you know, big thanks to her and everyone should definitely be tuning into Marvel's agents of shield. Cause it's a, it's a badass show. We love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you guys want to follow us, we do a show every week. Like we said earlier, uh, you can subscribe to the little subscribe button there and listen to our uh, weekly shenanigans and discussions about all sorts of fun stuff. You can uh, follow us on Twitter and that's at nerd appropriate on Twitter. And you can of course go to our Facebook page slash nerd appropriate on Facebook and find us there. And uh, yeah, subscribe. Everything's free. We love it. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> we love you. We love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we're, just, we're in love we're in love with all of you so thanks guys thank this is, you this, this is sad this is the last thing we're recording for comic-con and now it's officially over this is officially it's the really last it. it's so sad like it is did, did it you get the is. did you get the um the the post sdcc funk when you were done like the the sadness oh yeah yeah the sadness where oh. you leave you leave all that creativeness and you're just like kind of like oh, go back right. to my regular job yeah yeah i i um I you know went to work the next day and uh, I had like the depression combined with being like eight days behind at work, <laughs> so it was like depression and intense stress. So uh, I think I yeah it, it was a rough time. But uh, more conventions on the horizon, and of course we'll be there covering them and talking about all the fun and creative stuff going on. But uh, we'll see you guys later. Alrighty, bye bye.